What's up, everyone? I got Yuri Braddock with us, founder of Skip Q, as in Queen. And he's offering a pure shopper's delight for duty free shopping and rush shopping and like stores, restaurants, all sorts of stuff. And what I found very unconventional is I have no idea what that has to do with mechanical engineering, but that's what Yuri went to school for. And I actually went to school for actuarial science, which no one really knows what that is either. So happy to have Yuri on and chat about what he is doing at Skip Q amongst other things. I saw that you are involved in the community, you're on several boards, and you're doing a lot of cool things to not only build wealth and professional accolades, but also give back to society, which is super important to what I like to do as well. So happy to have Yuri here. And how does someone in mechanical engineering get into doing what Skip Q is? What is Skip Q just for like really basic people like me that don't fully understand what that is? So Joshua, first, thank you for having me and hosting me today. Really appreciate it. Um, well, to answer, you know, what has mechanical engineering to do with Skip Q, um, in a like a, in a little broader sense, I'll probably say mechanical engineering. Um, what I learned there is actually how to break down a problem, even if I don't know necessarily a lot about it, but at least how to structurally break it down and then put correctly pieces together in order to make sense. Right. And so I think often when you're an entrepreneur or actually you're building your company or you're running your company, you're often faced with challenges which come daily in on your desk. You might not know a lot about them, but you are immediately put uh, against that challenge. How do I tackle that? Right. And so in that sense, I think mechanical engineering did help a little bit, if not a lot. <laughs> um, but the, um, but Skipki, what we do actually, the idea of Skipki was born pretty much like a good two years ago. And if you look at an airport as a location, we merge on a mobile platform and we are opening B2B vertical as well, but on a mobile, mobile platform, that's how we started. We merge all the services in vendors, which participate at airports all around the world on a single platform. So that means. And by name, Skip Q, everything you can pre-buy in advance, not just reserve, but you actually pre-buy, you receive a confirmation code or a QR code. And then when the day of your travel happens, you have everything what you need already in your phone. So meaning, um, let's say we split the airport, what it's inside and what it's outside. And so what it's outside, we consider transportation to from airport parking around the airport and eSIM. And then as a passenger who actually walks into an airport, everything what you see, right? Duty free shops, bars, restaurants, uh, luggage, um, fast track, lounges, right? Everything. So, and then you extrapolate that globally. They're not just US, um, but uh, globally, that's actually what we do. I've like never really bought anything in an airport. I like walk past everything. Go. I'm like, don't right. talk to me when I see the person yeah. outside. Like, you know, hey, don't talk to me. I'm just right. uh, trying right. to get in my spot. I just like, want to be right. Correct. Exactly. Right. So like, how did you identify that this is a, like a gap in the industry? Like what kind mm -hmm. of travelers are using your service? Is it like domestic, international, both? Like, how did you come about finding that there was a problem that you created a solution for? So originally I'm coming from Europe, a small, small country, 2 million people uh, called Slovenia. It's kind of like a squeeze between Italy, Austria, Croatia, and Hungary. And um, I have my mom, dad, two brothers. Uh, I mean, mom, dad, and one brother are still in Slovenia while the other brother is in Spain. But nevertheless, I fly, let's say, at least twice a year. I go home, I mean, I go back and I visit them, right? Spend some time with them. And... Um, in order for me to get from Southern California to Ljubljana, which is my hometown, I, at least I need to have one transfer somewhere in Europe, like a major hub. Is that London? Is that Munich? Is that Frankfurt? It doesn't really matter, but one, right? And so if I travel, then at least I need three different apps for three airports. LAX is one. The second hub, the second app is the app of the hub somewhere in Europe. And then my home airport, hometown, right? So, and... It becomes, and not necessarily this is enough, because if you're looking at a particular special service, that app might not offer it. 
So to me, it was like, well, why don't we put this all together? Why all of a sudden, and especially if I'm, let's say, if I travel, so I travel twice a year just back home, but what if I travel also then for business and, you know, forever else? So now all of a sudden my phone becomes sort of like a, a library of different airport apps for uh, for me actually when I when I need to travel. So I said, well, no, let's merge that all together. And so that's how the idea was born. And um, and then we started. Um, I called up um, actually at that time two of my friends. Uh, one unfortunately is no longer with us because of the family obligations. But uh, one is her name is Saba. She's from India, from New Delhi. Um, extremely sharp uh, mind. Um, you know, extensive uh, business knowledge. I said, hey, Saba, you know, this is the idea. What do you think? And they were like, yeah, you're, let's do it. And so that happened sort of like, uh, uh, yeah, a good two, two years ago. And today, actually, our inventory is around 700 airports around the world. Uh, and uh, we're growing which is pretty, pretty exciting. I'll say that. Um, not a lot of uh, nights where I can sleep, obviously, right? The hair is gone, things like that. But the excitement is there and um, and the challenge as well. Um, and then to answer your question, Joshua writes, okay, like a passenger, right? Who just wants to get from point A to point B and who's using this. We're literally global, like literally global. Like we don't uh we do not uh limit ourselves to just us market because us market market actually in that sense really is very different than the rest of the world in an essence um and i'll give you an example when you said right i'm usually a person who doesn't shop it's very interesting when you look at the numbers of different surveys around the world an average us passenger who travels almost doesn't matter it's domestic or internationally they, in average, they spent around $140 at the airport, of which is around 60, 70. That's almost like around half they spent on food and drinks. And the other half they spent from little, a little bit maybe of duty-free, a little bit of maybe like a last minute sort of like a gifts and blah, blah, blah. That's it. You move that, you move the region to, and I mean, you look at the region, let's say, Middle East the amount goes 700 and up, right? That's actually what people consider when they travel. That's part of their budget when they travel. And so imagine then the buying power. Consequently, skip queue, because of the different buying power, because of different culture of how people travel, right? Today, let's say, you know, or I'll put it like that, years ago, traveling was considered something like really cool, really fancy. Well, today they actually put you in a in a can which is called an airplane and you you want to have the cheapest airline ticket possible to get from point a to point b people don't really necessarily care how is there a service what kind of service is there do you have enough uh leg room or not or you're just literally like a sardine there right and they are okay with that well you go to different parts of the world there is a certain demand when i travel because that's why i buying a more expensive airline ticket because i don't want to be a sardine because I don't want to, I do want to have a certain, a certain um, commodity, if you want to call it that way, right? And so part of that is also the entire experience from the time when you start planning your trip, meaning that actually you arrange your transportation from your house to the airport, or if you're driving into your own car, <clears throat> that you have your parking already pre-purchased there where you leave the car, um, that you want to grab that bottle of whiskey from the airport and you just go or that you want to have a lounge because actually you have i don't know three hour or four hour layover somewhere right and you don't want to deal with when you get there is lounge still available or is it fully booked or is there like you know an hour wait time and so that leaves me only an hour to be in there these are the things actually when you look into the industry you see actually, oh, it's a lot, right? It's a lot what people are still looking for and they don't have it there. So, so if I'm traveling to Italy mm -hmm. and I go on to skip queue, Correct. You, your app could tell me like things I could purchase only in Italy 
to help enhance my experience? Is that it no. or is it something different? No. So let's say you're traveling from, let's just say you're traveling from East Coast I know, from J, uh, JFK to, to Rome, right? So in, let's say you're traveling on, let's say on December 1st, today is August, whatever, 13th. So today you book your, you buy your transportation from your house to the airport, or today you buy your parking lot at JFK. Today you buy um, a lounge at JFK. You get all the confirmations, QR codes on your phone. It's an app, right? You download the app, you do that. You select an airport. Okay, at that airport, when you select it, you're buying this. At the same time, you're going to Italy. Okay, so you want to take your US phone with you, but you want that actually you're not getting charged by your carrier, I don't know, internet, right? The roaming, etc. right? But you buy an eSIM card because actually what you want, the moment where you land in Rome or whatever, actually you go in Italy, you turn on your US phone, you, you enable your eSIM card, which is simply a software. We used to write manually change SIM cards. Okay, now it's an eSIM. It's a pretty much like a software override. And your phone starts acting as a local there based on the data, based on the plan you purchased, right, as an eSIM. Um, these are the things, right? So it doesn't matter where you're flying um, and when you're flying, you actually actually can get everything in advance. No? At any airport, like I said, we have we cover right now 700 airports around the world, right? So if we cover per se, let's say that airport for to which you're flying or from where you're flying or through which airport you're flying, right? Yeah, you can you can get things through us. So what's the idea with the app that like someone like me who like never buys anything, like what would Skip Q be able to like do for my traveling experience? It seems like like save me time and like help me find certain things. And like, uh, I know a lot of people have stress around travel. Like mm -hmm. what were, mm -hmm. what, what was your defining factors so the, in the research that you did for the app? So part partially is the convenience, right? It's actually you arrange everything in advance. So you're not dealing with that last minute hustle and bustle and the option not to get it. Is that a bottle of whiskey? Is that, a, you know, like I said, a, a lounge pass? Is that, oh, now actually I didn't even know, but JFK is an extremely busy airport. I have to go now through the general line instead of buying a fast track, which takes me around and I cut the screening and I, you know, I save the time there. These are the things actually which... Literally on a daily basis, we bring that convenience to a user, right? Um, and um, and again, um, that's globally, right? So the app itself, and it's referring back also to the buying power. That's why the app is in four different languages already by default. It's in English, Spanish, Arabic, and Russian, right? So because when you look at the globe, you want to tap immediately like the majority of the of the globe where the you know the bigger languages are spoken right it like reminds me of like a fast pass at disney world where you get the fast pass and you cut okay. the line okay. with like an uber technology where you can schedule your ride or pick you know pick what kind of car that you want and like right. so it, here's it, the thing right it's a perfect example because you ask uber right because you mentioned uber right and i'll say it like this let's just say there is a family of five traveling right um, mom, dad, three kids, or I don't know, two couples, four people. It doesn't really matter. Um, when it comes down to that moment, okay, well, guys, it's a 10 in the morning. You know, we have a flight at one. Let's order Uber now. We're going. Well, you order, let's say, two cars for Uber, right? Because you said, okay, well, it's four of us, two, two, right? Two Uber cars come. All right, well, they open, they, they, they stop in front of your house, bam. You have, I don't know, 10 luggages. There are two cars, right? All right, so how are we going to fit in? Yeah. And the guy has, I don't know, whatever, like a, some sort of like an electric Toyota car. He opens the trunk. Yeah, there's going to be two luggages there, two people inside. We have one seat available. Okay, well, that means the other three pieces of luggage, what are we going to push it there, in there? Right. These are the things actually where 
if you can and you know, let's say, or during the winter time, you go skiing, you have your ski equipment, things of that nature where Skipio comes in and says, okay, I want to reserve, you know, my, my right, but these are in addition to just me as a person or two people going, this is also what we have. We have someone in luggage, we have, right, I don't know, um, um, whatever, uh, um, a wheelchair, whatever else we might have. Oh, okay. Right. And the other side will know, okay, this is the type of car needs to come and pick you up. Right. Got it. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. I so mean, skip Q. Trying to be, right. Yeah, correct. Trying to be super cool. That's really like that. Correct. Yeah. So with skip Q, mm -hmm. like people need to download it. So go in the app yeah, store, download it. Correct. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's free. And then, I guess the, the model register. is you just get like a little fraction of each purchase Correct. people make. So Correct. Exactly. for the user, is there like a membership fee no. or different no. things uh -huh. yet? No, not no. yet. No. And no, it's not even yet. It's not going to be. I mm -hmm. don't, this is, it's a, it's a free for people who want to use it, who travel, right? I, it's not, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get a tier program in the company because actually if you're yeah. buying, I don't know, 10, if you're giving me 10 bucks a month, then we give you up to here. If you're giving me 20, then we're giving up to here. These are different businesses who might have this business model, and that's great. SkipQ is not that, right? We, it's our responsibility to negotiate actually on the back end with our suppliers, our commercial agreements, right? That's not on the user to actually offset that if we are not able to negotiate here on the back end, right? That's not your responsibility to pay for that. For them, it's actually to use it. We, it's our responsibility to do the negotiations and to make the product as cool as possible for users to use it. Hmm. I'm going to download it and uh, see how it works on my next trip. In a, I, I think I go somewhere in a week. Well, going, so let me know then how it works. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be a little test subject. I'll let you know how it okay. goes. Um, so like, it also helps with the airport lines, you said? Correct, right? Part of it is also fast, let's call it fast track, but it means in an essence is actually um, its ability to, um, to, to skip the queue. That's why also the name, you're always skipping the queue. You don't need to wait in line, right? So that actually, instead of actually getting there, okay, now I have to go through the additional, you know, control my passports, my, whatever documentation, whatever it might be. No, I have a fast track. Thank you very much. Bam, here is a separate line. Here we go. Right. That's so it. So how do you how do you how do you handle that with security in case like you get someone who has no idea, like what the heck is this? Yeah. Um so because I'm sure I'm sure that's happened before. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So you look from the perspective, every year you have so many millions of people who are first time travelers who are flying with an airline, right? They are the first time at the airport. And let's just say it happens, it's the first time for whatever reason, because their friend or someone else said, hey, download SkipQ and use it when you go, right? They download SkipQ, they might not necessarily know what all this is, right? What all these services, because it's different when someone sees a duty-free versus if someone sees like a more like a industry term talking about, let's say, fast track, right? They might not know what that is. And that can happen, absolutely, right? Um, and I think it's a learning curve. It's a learning curve also for a for a user, for a passenger, not from the perspective of using SkipQ, but more from the perspective they're the first time traveler. And it might be that it's going to be only the one time traveler in their entire life. It might happen. It's probably it's not like a ideal SkipQ customer, but it's still a SkipQ customer. So to us, it's actually, again, the challenge, how that first time traveler tell or pass the message in a sense of like a use use the um, let's say fast track option in order for in order for you to skip a certain line, right? Um, not necessarily all lines or I'll say like all checkpoints are part of a fast track option, mm -hmm. right? Not at all because again you have so many different countries you have so many different regulations based on the countries right and obviously whoever we connect with right whoever we plug with on the back end that's their setup so what we ask during the process when they make a let's say um a purchase of a fast track there are certain questions which are answered that which are then on the back end passed 
right, to our supplier, which are then validated. Oh, okay, cool, right? Let's say, I don't know, Yure or Joshua, they can get, they got a, a fast track. That's fine, right? Um, if during that, those questions, for example, like a screening question, but it doesn't mean that that's like, you know, 15 pages and you have to scroll down. It's not like that, right? But um, if those few questions which needs to be answered, you cannot answer, well, then you will not be able to buy fast track, right? It's, hmm. it's very simple. What are some of the questions that you ask in the app? Um, how about we, we leave that to people actually to download the app because they are curious and see actually what they are. <laughs> okay. Let's do that. Um, but they are not, you know, nobody will go and ask, I don't know, social security when, you know, people are so sensitive or I don't know, like how many times have you been married or, you know, like things like that. These are not the questions, right? It's more in a sense of imagine actually when you go for a TSA, right? Mm -hmm. Very similar thing, right? Are you able to share like what's next with Skip Q on how you're going to continue to work on the client experience? Because that's what it seems like. It seems like it's like a whole, like the Ritz Carlton of travel with Uber, fast track, like all these different variables that you're working on Got to yeah. uh, eliminate the travel stress, especially if, I mean, a lot of people have anxiety going to the airport and this mm -hmm. could help them eliminate that anxiety, knowing that they have these systems in place for when right. they get to the airport, they're like, I'm not going to have to worry about the line. I'm Imagine not going to have to worry right. about this and that. Mm -hmm. You know, you know how often actually can happen. Let's just say that, you know, you ask, as a country where a lot of people move into, right? Come. So they are the first, they're, there's this first generation, but then their mom, dads, or whoever, they're coming to visit them, right? And it happens that actually they are the first time who are, who are traveling, but you have a language barrier. You have other, right? You're not familiar with the sort of like a how to navigate an airport. Well, you buy actually that assistance at the airport that someone comes and says, hey, you know what, Yure, um, we're going to take you from, you know, the terminal when you land or from the moment when you step into an airport, we're going to take you to your gate. That's actually where you're going to wait for your, for, your, for your plane. And then whatever, you have a trans, uh, transit airport, the same thing is going to happen. When you get off the plane, someone will be there waiting for Yure, will grab him for the hand or he'll put you in one of those electric cars. And they will take you to, to the gate where, where then your next flight will be. Way much easier because actually you might, it really might be that there is no, that there is a language barrier, right? That actually you literally as a person, you don't know how to, how to navigate. And then, and then that, these are the things which in real life often happen, right? Um, the, um, what is next that's keep you, like I said, we were B2C, but the industry came back to us travel, leisure industry came back to us saying, guys, where are you in your B2B vertical? And we said, nowhere. <laughs> um, and I said, well, we want to have you yesterday. Um, and um, we said, okay, well, I guess there's going to be some major um, sort of like a, a timeline change within the company. We sat down, we talked about it. We said, I think this is a good idea. Let's open B2B. Uh, vertical that's actually what we are literally right now working on and we will launch if everything goes as it should knock on wood um by the end of this year right. if not sooner if not sooner is there like um this this may not be in skip queue at all because i haven't i haven't looked at the app yet but like is it like let's just say my flight's delayed mm -hmm. is there anything in the skip queue app that could help make my flight delay a more uh, pleasant experience correct that is one thing because look imagine it's very simple right um let's just say that you are booking a transfer from let's just say from jfk to your house i just say you're flying with a airline i don't know american airlines flight number one well it happens that you know when you booked when you book the transport transfer from jfk to your house you had to enter your flight number. Why is that? Also for the driver to monitor when the flight arrives, right? It might come earlier. It come, might it might have a delay. So you both will get a notification. Hey, you know what? To you, for, for you, Joshua, the peace of mind that your driver is there and will be waiting for you if it's a delay or if it's earlier, will still be there. 
and the driver has the same notification on the other side telling, hey, Joshua's flight is coming in early or is arriving late. So actually you guys will still handshake, right? Now, obviously it would be different if let's say, let's just say it's a schedule change because of the weather, right? And now they route you not to JFK, but they route you to, I don't know, LaGuardia person. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, now, right? And on top of that, it's not the same day, but it's, I don't know, a day later or a day earlier. Okay, well, that's actually where the customer service support does step in, right? Because we get also that notification, hey, wait a second, Joshua's flight is not coming. Okay, well, what do we do now with Joshua, right? Does Joshua still want, or is there a friend now who is actually picking up Joshua and is taking Joshua home, right? Things can change. Obviously, in this dynamic world today, you have tons of options, right? Um, and on how these options are then, you know, um, synced with the company. So that's actually where the customer support does come in and say, okay, Joshua, do you want still that actually we switch you to LaGuardia and they pick you to LaGuardia or you want a full refund or, you know, whatever might be, right? Th these, are, these are live uh, uh, situations, which, yeah, of course. But is the question actually how you tackle them, man? It's yeah. part of that customer service. In yeah, going back to your uh, problem-solving engineering yeah, background. There you go. Exactly. Thank you. Correct. So right. we went like full circle on that. So yeah. since starting SkipQ, what mm -hmm. has been one of the experiences that uh, went completely haywire that you're able to share? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's probably not funny at the moment, but like, look, it's like one of those things where it happens to you in the moment. Like it's not funny. And you look back, you know, you know, this is kind of funny. That is, yeah. Well, I mean, I'll tell you this, man. Um, the whole looking back, I'll say like that. What about back, like when uh, all the airplanes like went down with CrowdStrike? The <laughs> so, <laughs> so 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 here is the, I'll probably I'll probably say like that, man. Um, I think the most like funny things now looking back is actually where we initially got together, the founders. And we said, okay, well, this is actually our vision. This is actually how we want to do it. And then happened the research. But then after the research happened, we started talking with the industry, talking with certain, right? And so when you start realizing, um, and um, I hope, you know, this, um, I'll try to say it in a very PC form, but it's a, it's a very interesting how, our brain was wired at that time and what we thought actually how we're going to be doing it. And then when the industry comes back and it's literally like a hammer, like talk on the head, like, guys, this is not how, how the industry works. Like, wake up. And it was just kind of like a toink, toink, toink on our heads, like several times. And you're like, oh, wait a second, what is happening? And then when you adjust or you pivot or you kind of like, a, you know, you go through your business model and you say, okay, well, these things actually need to be changed. Okay, how do we do that crap? We never thought about this at all. Um, and then, right, and then you hit a different culture, Joshua. After that, you hit a different culture. Because actually you think, okay, well, US is one. I don't know, India is second. But then actually when you start talking, you start communicating with these different partners from all around the world, like literally all around the world, exception of North Korea, right? The 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 It comes down to literally like, I don't even know how to talk. Like in, in certain moments are like, there is a person on the other side of, I don't know, of, of camera or, or in person, doesn't really matter. But it's from completely different culture. And you feel like I'm completely naked. I don't have any clothes on. Like, I don't even know what to do now. <laughs> Yet alone what to say. Right? And it's like, okay, uh, you know, and you are literally as a child, like literally as a child who is, First time learning how to walk. That's actually how you're going through that conversation or through that sort of like a, um, a interaction with the person. Th these are the things which, I mean, happen still today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but um, that's probably like looking back how we were and, you know, like sort of like a, those, you know, like kind of like, like I said, like, you know, like little... Um, um, a uh, little those wake up or aha moments we got, right? Like, 
that's probably like one of the best things yeah i can look back well now with like the phones and stuff like can people like talk and like translate and like show the phone to people and whatnot like how how has that been i've seen a couple people do that that weren't they're were speaking spanish and i was speaking english correct you mean in the sense of communication when yeah. you communicated with them yeah well it's not so in that sense actually i'll say um, you know, when it came down to communication in that regard, that was not a problem. When I what I was referring to in a sense of communication is, you know, different different cultural habits when you communicate. Do you bow? Don't you bow? Do you oh, look at the eyes? You don't look at the like eyes. Like some there certain is things that are like maybe side, offensive right? in certain cultures. Yeah, or... or just different, right? So on the other side, there is a woman, right? You're a man, but then how do you talk to her like what is the how do you accept a credit card right do you accept it with both hands just with one hand do you just flip it over the table or you or or what do you do or you you know these are the things these are the situations where where you do find yourself completely completely um helpless yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah to like yeah there are moments when you're like you know sort of like you know the Matrix movie when yeah. sort of like at the time sort of like a slows down and you have that slow motion moves. That's exactly what happens in the head. Almost the time almost stops because the speed of your thoughts is going so fast that you get this ample amount of thoughts in that split of a second. What am I going to say now? What should I do? What would be the right reaction if you want to say what would be the right thing to say because you know that you are barefoot like literally and you don't know what to say and very often funny situations then obviously happen right because it is clear that you know at least this guy who is from the western civilization right doesn't have any idea how to navigate a person from a different area of the world like literally does not right even though he's trying really hard but hey the reality is doesn't work right and then both sides it's not that actually you know something bad comes out of it it's really it's that awkward moment or like extremely funny moment both sides see that recognize that and sometimes that actually works even better in a sense of like if you know how to correctly spin it maybe next time during the meeting or whatever might be, because actually it's a funny memory of how was the first time when we communicated, right? Or met. I'm gonna go download Skip Q right now and everyone should go check it out and happy to have you on. We'll see everyone next Thank time. You. Bye everyone. Thank you.